Well, we have just begun a series of messages on becoming the one that God created us to be. Last week, the good news we heard was that God created us to flourish. God did not create us to um, live a life where we just survived, but to live life in the fullest. Like a tree that is adorned with glorious, beautiful yellow leaves in the fall. Not just a stick stuck in the ground. We were created to flourish to have life and lives filled with joy and peace and not just walk through the motions of everyday life. And we were created to live lives that help others to flourish. And God did not create us to live lives by ourselves, but he sent us his son Jesus to demonstrate for us all how to live the flourishing life because Jesus did live He loved, served, healed, prayed, died, and rose again. And life has a way of making us forget that. That there is a me modeled after Jesus that we were created to be. Life has a way of blocking the spirit that lives and flows in each of us. I am reminded of a story of when my daughter Sarah, who is now 12, was still yet an only child. She loved to play peekaboo. We would ask the question, where's Sarah? And then we'd put our hands in front of our eyes, and then, like, we, we would say, oh, I can't find her. And then, like magic, we'd open our hands and our eyes, and we'd see, and we'd say, there she is, as if she had been lost, but no, She was safely there all the time. Sarah Ann Cox was right there. And the game progressed to the point where instead of my hands, I would use the blanket and say, where's Sarah? I can't find her. And then I'd pull the blanket away, and there was Sarah again. And she loved this game so much that one time, when Greg and I were traveling back home to Titusville, Pennsylvania, um, Sarah was silent for a little while in the, in the car. Then all of a sudden we heard this flurry of a, of a blanket being thrown over her head. And she said, Mommy, Daddy, where's Sarah? I can't find me. Oh, life is like that sometimes. You're right there, but you can't find me. And God wants each one of us to find that me that God created us to be, to lift that blanket away from our heads and that everything is there, that everything that was promised when God created each one of us. When we are not flourishing as God designed us to, when we are, not, when we are just existing, it is because we lose flow We lose the flow and we lose connection with God in our lives. Times like these when we are languishing, when we are caught, and John Ortberg calls this time the gap. And that gap is the space between the you as God created you to be and the you that exists, that currently exists. And now our natural tendency to bridge the gap may be to to try harder, to push, and to control everything around us. This, we feel, may actually bring about the circumstances where we are able to be the the me that God wants us to be. Or we we can fake it. We can pretend to be the me that we think we're supposed to be or that we think others think we should be. It takes a lot of energy to do that. Or when the flow of a flourishing life and the connection with God is not present and we have, we have tried and we have pretended all that we can, we can very easily get used to the languishing and accept that as our path in life. Oh, but that is not, that is not what God wants. God created us to flourish God knew that to flourish, the gap would have to be bridged. We would need Jesus Christ in our lives. 
In order to live a flourishing life, we need to understand that we can't do it ourselves. We can't fix anybody else, and we can't fix ourselves. We can't save anybody else for all eternity, and we can't save ourselves for eternity. We weren't created to do that. But Jesus Christ was. Self-improvement is no more God's plan than self-salvation. God gave to each one of us his son, Jesus Christ, so that we might have life that flourishes now and that flourishes for all eternity. And somehow, somehow we need to remember again, we need to put ourselves in a place We need to help put others in a place where we can hear that the gap between the existing me and the gap and the and the the me that God wants me to be is bridged by the grace of God, Jesus Christ. That God has made a way for us to bridge the gap. We need to remember that we are saved by grace and live by grace. We live a flourishing life through grace when we are in the flow and when we are connected to God. It's very easy to be in the flow when we are in a river, whether in a canoe or on a raft or you're in a quick swim. When we go with the current, we go with the direction of the flow, it can be really nice and really easy. It just happens. It happens around you. There is no struggle and there is no forcing of the issue. You just flow. When a river flows, it flourishes, and everything around the river flourishes as well. We have some pictures of some rivers that we're going to try to get up here. See, you notice everything around the river is flowing. I wouldn't want to raft down that river. And here, this river, around it, the lushness around it of the green trees and the life that is surrounding it, Okay, this, this is my dream of a flourishing river. This is the, the Chocolate River from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, if you didn't recognize it, I know it's not a national landmark, but it's flourishing. There's life all around it. But look at the beauty and the fullness of that flourishing river that is there. How beautiful, how beautiful. And we are a people that know rivers. Pittsburgh is a city that was born and lives by three rivers. Industry and leisure have flourished because of the rivers. Now, as God's people, we also know the language of rivers. In the first book of the Bible, in Genesis, we hear of, of, and we learn of a river that flows from the garden. And in the last book of the Bible, in Revelation, we hear of the crystal clear river flowing from the throne of God. In between these two sightings, rivers are mentioned over 150 times. Now think about this. Israel was and is a desert, a very dry land where water was life and a river was a sign of of a flourishing life. People would search for water. Animals would search for water because without water there is no life and they will die. Our bodies feel this need, and animals and, and, and people will search for water because water must be found. In Psalm 42, we hear, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. As the deer pants for water, because as this deer is searching for water and is thirsty, The deer knows without water it will die. So my soul longs after you. Without God, we will die. With water, the deer will flourish. With God, the me that I was created to be will flourish. When we long for God, we invite the Spirit to come. Come work in us and bring us peace, truth, and life. Come and work through us so that others may flourish as well. Just as trees and animals and perhaps an entire city will grow when the river flourishes, there is no stopping when the Spirit flows through us. The Spirit flows in us and through us 
and others flourish as well. Now, the flow of the river, the flow of the Spirit is different with everyone, for no two of us are alike. We may be similar. We may have the same likes and dislikes. We may have the same, same favorite color. We may all have curly hair, but we're not all the same. We are God's masterpiece. And I love how John Ortberg describes us as a masterpiece. He says that we are God's masterpiece, not God's appliance. A masterpiece is a one-of-a-kind work of art that a master craftsman has lovingly spent time on to create. There will never, never be another work of art like it. There may be one similar, but there'll never be another one just exactly like it. An appliance, on the other hand, is mass-produced. And one of the great things about an appliance is that it can be replaced quite easily and quickly with one just like it. I broke my toaster once. I love that toaster. But, you know, the toaster I got 90 minutes later, I love that toaster too. But God's plan for creating you and continually shaping you will be like no one else's. Each of our lives are different. We learn differently, we suffer differently, we grieve differently, we triumph differently, and we sin differently. Just look at the Bible and the examples we have in the Bible of of how God has shaped people. This is from page 49 of John Ortberg's book. He had Abraham take a walk, Elijah take a nap, Joshua take a lap, and Adam take the rap. He gave Moses a 40-year time out. He gave David a harp and a dance, and he gave Paul a pen and a scroll. He wrestled with Jacob, argued with Job, whispered to Elijah, warned Cain, and comforted Hagar. He gave Aaron an altar, Miriam a song, Gideon a fleece, Peter a name, and Elisha a mantle. Jesus was stern with the rich young ruler, tender with the woman caught in adultery, patient with the disciples, blistering with the scribes, gentle with the children, and gracious to the thief on the cross. God is completely aware of how your life will flourish. God is completely aware of how the Spirit can flow through you. God is completely devoted to you so that your life can flourish. But to flourish, we must surrender. There is no way for a human being to come to God that does not involve surrender. When we offer our lives, our bodies as a living sacrifice, we are offering surrender every day. A surrender says, yes, I will discover what makes me grow and flourish. A surrender is acknowledging that there is a God and that it's not you. We have to surrender to become fully alive. You know, I have been told that John Wesley practiced asking this question to all in his small group. How is it with your soul? To check on the status of being fully alive. And I take that to mean is how, how is it in that deep place inside of you? How is it with the me that God created you to be? How is your flow? Do you feel the spirit flowing through you? Do you see the spirits of the fruit working, flowing through you, spilling over to others in your life? Are you fully alive? Because for each one of us, God has given us a pathway to be free and to flourish. And it may not be that we need to try harder to be the me I want to be. I mean, the American way says if we just give a little bit more, if we just work a few more hours, if we just move a little bit faster, if I can just have one more conversation, if I can just, we can make it. But it may be the opposite. We, na- need, we may need to be trying softer. If you have your Bibles, 
If you want to turn with me or your pew Bible, um, turn to Luke chapter 17, um, verses 7 through 10, a little known parable. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from the plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and, and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Now the parable of the unworthy servant could very easily be called the parable of trying softer. At first glance, our human hearts wonder why kind Jesus, Jesus who modeled servanthood, would question everyone coming to the table for the dinner that the master had prepared. But really, really what Jesus is saying, what Jesus is doing is trying to keep us from being too impressed with, with how hard we are trying. Jesus, the bridge between the me that exists and the me that God wants me to be, encourages us to move to a very high stage of living life in the flow of a flourishing life. Jesus may be trying to tell us, you know, the harder you work to control things, the more you lose control. The more you try to make everything right, the more distant you become from the one who created you and continues to shape you. You know, perhaps we are so hardworking that we can't feel what is supposed to come naturally. Perhaps we are seeking control that we begin to live our lives as people who are distant from the spirit that is flowing. If we could just try softer. If we could just let go, if we could just lay back in the river and not fight the flow of life that leads to flourishing, because they, it is there, it is there, always there, even when I can't find me. Friends, how is it with your soul? Can you find the me that God created you to be? Perhaps that's a question we could ask one another this week. Perhaps that is a question we can ask everyone this week. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.